There is new information emerging every single day on how this coronavirus spreads and how best to approach protecting yourself against COVID-19 moving forward. The best practices definitely still continue to be washing your hands with soap and water and of course, social distancing. But somehow the public consensus on face masks is still up in the air. Up until the end of March, the general consensus was that there was no need to wear face masks unless you were sick, you were in this gray zone of exhibiting possible symptoms, or you were taking care of someone who was sick or was at high risk. And yet, just a few days later, the CDC published a statement on April 3rd saying that Americans should wear cloth masks when going into public areas. At the time, the World Health Organization remained neutral on the topic and was steadfast in pointing out that there was a lack of evidence associated with the use of DIY cloth masks. Fast forwarding many months later, we honestly still have little idea how this virus is going to progress. Most claims are modeling off of viruses of this kind of transmission and this degree of global spread. And based on that, it is likely it will come back and hit even harder come fall and winter and possibly even sooner but it's unpredictable. The four most common coronaviruses identified tend to peak in the winter months. And if this one follows the same patterns, it is going to coincide with flu infections and weaker immunity overall, just like what happened with H1N1 in 2009, where swine flu swept through in the spring and then returned in the fall with its second wave that was much worse. It might also behave like the 1918 influenza pandemic, which killed 50 million people globally. And the second wave of which hit in September after the initial wave in spring. And the second wave was far more lethal the second time around. I am intentionally not even going to go into the literature on SARS-CoV-2 and how effective masks are in preventing its transmission for a couple reasons. First of all, like I said, we have no idea what the trajectory of this virus is. We've seen nothing like it before. And also there are just too many opinions and too many pressures from both altruistic and self-serving parties. So the conclusion you wanna to come to is up to you entirely because the world will keep flip-flopping on the topic without us being able to discern if it comes from a place that's unbiased or not. The CDC, Anthony Fauci, the World Health Organization, they've all made claims and then retracted them. And there's too much room for politics to really judge any of the claims we've seen thus far, I think. As time goes on, we are going to continue to hear a lot of back and forth on face masks, and that's okay because science is one of those things where you want to be changing and developing your opinion and stance on a matter as more and more is unveiled and understood. But if the consensus at the end of the day decides that it is necessary for you to wear masks or you feel more secure wearing one, then have a good few on hand now because the biggest overarching fact of the matter is that they are going to do more good than harm either way you twist it. What I will say, however, is that there have been major publications releasing statements for and against the usage of cloth masks. And what's interesting is that many of the ones claiming they have no benefit have either been retracted down the line, they've been updated down the line, or they have made this claim on the basis that the viral particle is too small for standard filtration measures, even including a 95 level protection, not taking into account the fact that most of the virus transmission occurs via larger particle secretions. And that means even though the virus itself is tiny, 0.12 microns on average, it is being spread on much larger aerosolized droplets as people speak, cough, sneeze, eat, and even though some may come across a mask, whether it is medical grade or cloth based, many, many, many more are going to be trapped and not left available to hang in the air or later fall to a surface to be picked up by touch. The benefit of even a modest reduction in transmission at the very least outweighs the possibility of harm. I am taking the time to reiterate the importance of wearing masks when social distancing isn't possible or just not happening because I see face mask usage dwindling as quickly as our social distancing is. And I'm guilty of this myself, but it has to stop. We are not in the clear yet. And how we approach this next phase will determine the progression of this pandemic. 
nobody wants to go back into lockdown we have all suffered enough globally so if we're being granted the freedom to venture back into the norm we have to conscientiously remember to keep putting safety first individually every single day there is no gambling room left as a reminder, masks are not to protect us from others. And I feel like that is what goes through most people's minds when they start taking chances with choosing not to wear them when they go out. But the mask isn't for you or for me, it's for others, to protect others from us. Even when you're wearing a mask, air tends to come through to our inhale through the sides or the top or the bottom of the mask, not directly through the fabric. So there isn't much of a barrier for us when we're inhaling, but when we exhale, it goes directly through the cloth or the fabric and protects those around us if by chance we are carrying the pathogen. It's like a formalized way of coughing into your elbow. There are a couple of things you wanna look out for when you're choosing a mask for yourself and for your family. The material used matters. A bandana is not gonna fare as well as something like a dish towel if you're making a mask at home. You need at least two layers of fabric to improve filtration. The fabric needs to be threaded enough to provide filtration of airflow, but at the same time, it has to be something that's comfortable that you can tolerate wearing, not something rough and uncomfortable on your skin or too thick to wear in the warmer months. Something broad enough to cover your nose and your mouth comfortably with a flexible border so it can lay across your nose and your facial anatomy with somewhat of a closer fit and this will help not fog up your glasses as well. Um, ear loops that aren't going to cut into your skin or make it raw. This is something that often gets overlooked, but it makes such a difference in how likely you are to wear the mask at every given opportunity. And you need something easy to put on and take off and something that doesn't require too much fussing around with throughout the wear time to minimize how often you touch your face. I have tried tons of masks in my time and of course have a lot of experience wearing medical grade ones for hours on end as well. But the one that I personally choose to wear on a daily basis now is this one from Maskwell. What I love about this mask is that it gives me a hybridized protection between a cloth mask and a medical grade quality mask. The mask itself is made up of a fabric that is thick enough to offer protection, but also thin enough that it sits comfortably on my face. It's not uncomfortable in the heat or in long periods of wear, and it's broad enough that it covers my nose and my chin without the need to fidget with it or adjust it every other moment and it doesn't make me feel claustrophobic and that is something that I really struggled with with all the other masks that I tried. The best part is that it comes with a pocket on the inside for the insertion of a filter and every Maskwell mask comes with a packet of filters like this but they also provide a subscription service for refills of this filter insert and this is what makes these guys stand out the filters themselves are made of merv 13 filtration media and if you're unfamiliar with this merv stands for minimum efficiency reporting value and a merv rating tells you on a scale of 1 to 16 how efficiently this filter traps particles this media is what makes up the pleats of the air filters or the furnace filters in your building's hvac system and the higher the number the higher the airflow resistance and protection Remember how we said that the SARS-CoV-2 virus particle was about 0.125 microns in size, but it spread on much larger particles? Well, interestingly, a MERV-13 filter, even to qualify as that rating, has to catch 90% of particles, one to three microns in size, and up to 75% of particles, 0.3 to one microns in size. For reference, an N95 mask filters about 95% of particles, 0.3 to one microns in size, and a cloth mask filters 10 to 15% of particles of that size. So you see the very clear value in hybridizing the layers of a cloth mask with the addition of this filter. Here are a few key points to keep in mind when using a mask though. Touch the ear loops only. Don't touch the actual part of the mask when you're putting it on to minimize getting your hands dirty or putting something onto the mask. Also be careful to always have the same side facing out and the same side facing in if yours is one color. And if you need to adjust once the mask is on, do it by touching only the top and the bottom, never the bulk of the mask. Also, do not pull it down under your chin and then back up to talk or drink or just get it off your face because that's just defeating the purpose of the mask and also worsening the risk of infection. 
If your mask is fogging up your glasses, you can try looping around the elastic one time and then putting it on. This will make the mask fit tighter, but it'll also reduce the fog up into your glasses. If your child is having a hard time wearing the mask, which is understandable, these things are scary, get a really soft one like this and lead by example. This is our new normal. So whether we accept that today or tomorrow, the more we make an effort to make this a part of our everyday routine, the easier it'll be to create that habit and make sure that you're washing your masks regularly. You can go longer without washing it if you're using one with a filter insert like this, but in between uses, flip it inside out, put it in a closed container, and ideally even have two so you have a backup. So that is all for this video, you guys. I hope I was able to shed some light on the normalization of face masks without getting into a heavy political debate. If you would like to see any of the scientific papers that I glanced over, um, I am going to leave them in the description below. Feel free to read them for yourself and draw a conclusion that makes sense to you. And if you would like for me to go in to detail on these um, papers and debate them, then I can do that in a future video as well. Just let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, if it helped you, and also subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more. Um, again, I know that this is a really big transition for us in the world, but there are parts of the world that have been wearing face masks as a norm on all public excursions for a very, very long time. So if we need to adopt that for ourselves too, that is totally okay. And all of this is just a lot more doable when you have a good quality, reliable product to help you along the way. This just makes me feel so much safer, but safety is also negated if we lose our resolve to wash our hands, to social distance, and to not touch our face as much as possible. So do it all because it does go hand in hand. So that is all for now. Until next time, stay safe, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.